Well, I'm now joined by ITV Director of Television, Peter Fincham. Peter, it's very nice to see you. How's your, how's your festival been? Oh, it's been good. It's been, I've, I've been to the television festival many times, um, but I've never before um, been obliged to lie down on the front of the main stage um, with my legs apart while Keith Lemon has performed a sex act on me. So in that sense, I have a feeling that when all other memories of this festival fade, that might be what sticks in the mind for me. I hope not for other people, though. It may live on on uh, YouTube, I fear. I hope not. Yeah. We should say this was a, a festival I think, edition. I think, of... I've, I think I've got lawyers onto it even now. <laughs> this was Celebrity Juice, which you... you, uh, you... It was. Celebrity Juice, the opening thing, which I was on Holly Willoughby's team. And Holly tried really hard to look after me, but I think inevitably I was in for a little bit of humiliation from Keith Lemon. I think you did well. I think your head, and your, uh, your head only went in your hands once, I think. So, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, good work on that. But uh, more seriously, what was your take on Liz Murdoch's McTaggart? I thought it was a good McTaggart. I've been so, had my head down so much today, I haven't really seen what sort of press coverage there's been. Um, but, you know, brave to come along and do it, bearing in mind how much of a spotlight is, is shone on everything to do with, you know, News Corps and the Murdochs today. And I thought she did it and did it really well. And she had plenty to say about the, uh, the impact of the, well, the digital era, which has been with us for a while, of course, but also the importance of second screen and, and connecting with your audiences. Where, where are you at on that at ITV? Well, we, uh, the second screen experience, our audience is very familiar with the second screen experience, and, uh, and we've been doing things in that, in that area for, for some time. Lots of senior people in television have got kids who become their own you know, private focus group. So, so I... You know, I can see the way they're able to watch the television and do all sorts of things on a computer or a tablet at the same time. And I think, broadly speaking, that enriches the television experience. But I think what Elizabeth Murdoch also rightly put a lot of emphasis on was that great ideas, great programmes, programmes people want, want to watch, that creates all that associated activity that is developing so fast and becoming such an exciting part of television. It's not in opposition to it, it goes hand in hand with it. But she also appeared to um, declare the, the death of spot advertising. I don't know if you picked that up. Do you think she was hasty in that regard? I didn't pick that up. Did she say that? The end of traditional 30 second advertising. Well, that's um, the end of tra traditional 30 second advertising has been forecast many times over the years, but there's still quite a lot of it about. I don't, th I don't think it's a question of the end of spot advertising at all. It's a question of the evolution of the way that television engages with audiences, and that's true of programs and advertising um, uh, together. Um, and again, that leads you back to different ways of watching television and uh, spot advertising works subtly differently when you're watching online than when you're watching on broadcast. We don't really know where we'll be in five years time. I think spot advertising will still be around in five years time. Well, let's talk, let's focus on Saturday night. X Factor came back uh, last Saturday, uh, red or black either side. Seemed like a deliberate attempt to give red or black as much of a leg up as possible, but it didn't really work ratings-wise, it would appear. Well, hang on. It, 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 uh, you need to look at what red or black did during, its, the, during the run, both before and after X Factor, and it grew significantly, and it, uh, and, and it peaked at a very good figure of around five million in the second, in the second program. Um, red or black, uh, we did red or black last autumn. It was kind of quite a high-profile launch and it ran into some issues during the, the course of the run. It was a, a live run, a strip week. We had some problems with contestants that were much publicized and so on and so forth. This is quite a different show. It's a weekly show on a Saturday night. It's pre-recorded, it's all in the can. The format's been changed. I think it's built, if you like, on more solid foundations now than before. And last Saturday was the, you know, the first outing of it, but we, it's on again tomorrow night and be on the following Saturday. So, you, you, you know, let, let's see. I think it's a, it's a good show. It's a very well-produced show. Um, and we'd like it to become a fixture on ITV Saturday night. Um, uh, and in due course, we'll see. But it was ratings were down year on year, as was the launch well, show yeah, for the X Factor. You can't quite compare the, the little launch of Red or Black in the two. The Red or Black last year launched in September, not in August. X Factor, yes, it's true. I mean, I don't want to you know, make excuses anyway. Last weekend was the hottest weekend of the year, and it's still the middle of August, a um, couple of weeks after the Olympics. I think television viewing has been down a little bit. I think probably people gorged on television during the Olympics, and indeed, you know, why shouldn't they have done it? It was a wonderful, wonderful event. And, and so, you know, with the sort of 
eventual arrival of, of, of the summer in the second half of August, I think there has been a, um, you know, to a degree people not watching quite as much. But the X Factor is on until December. It's a, it's a long run, as I like to say. Don't think the 100 metres, think the 10,000 metres. Don't think Usain Bolt, think Mo Farah. Um, so these are early days and uh, um, it's a very, the, 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 the talent in X Factor, um, if you watched the show last Saturday, was exceptionally strong. We know that the X Factor is about, it's not about August, really. it's about October, November, when you're down to the last 12 and then you're down to smaller numbers and then what you need is great talent. And all the indications are this year there's some really brilliant talent in the X Factor. And just finally, Peter, I'm sure there's plenty look, to look forward to in ITV, but just give us one thing for the autumn schedule. Oh, that's a really, that's, that's challenging to say, um, pick one thing out. Um, well, we've got a really, really rich autumn of, of drama, um, some, uh, some titles that, you know, we're really excited about. Oh, if I had to pick out one, well, um, maybe because I've seen more of it than I have of some of the others, um, a, a drama, a series by Jeff Pope, uh, made by ITV Studios called Mrs. Biggs, about Ronnie Biggs and the Great Train Robbery, seen through the eyes of Charmian Biggs, Biggs' wife, played by Sheridan Smith, a, a, a tremendous performance. I've seen three episodes of that. I think it's brilliant, to be absolutely honest. But I hate calling these things in advance because I don't want to put pressure on them at all. But you asked me to name one thing, that's the one I'd name. Jeff Pope was a man behind Appropriate Adult, of course, which was, was a fantastic business and, and many awards. Jeff is, a, is an ITV treasure. Yeah. Peter Fincham, thanks very much.